something else, a word that it's amazing that we haven't had to learn yet, which is the forms of the verb to be. The only one that we have had, you, do you remember this, is the third person singular and the third person plural of the verb to be. I think we learned he, she, and it is, and they are. I think so, but they haven't used them for a long time. At the beginning we had sentences with them. But anyhow, let's, let's talk about these words. So the reason that we're getting them in this lesson is that um, some of the forms of the verb to be, a verb that means I am, you are, he is, and so forth, are enclitic and some are not. Mm -hmm. So we're being introduced to the concept of enclitics here and we're going to get the form. So let's look at the present indicative of the verb to be. And the other reason is that it's an athematic verb, right? And we mm -hmm. just had athematic uh, verbs, dero, me, histe, me, antithena. So this is a, uh, among the oldest words in the language. So you know how bad it is in English, okay? Mm -hmm. So the inflection of the verb to be is tricky in Greek, but the root is es, okay? If you keep this in mind, it might be helpful, okay? Root is es, and that e can turn into a an o, okay? So you can have forms with os, or you can have forms in which you just have an s, okay? Um, because you can have e or o vowel or no vowel, all right? And s is an unstable sound in Greek, so Sometimes there's nothing yes. left, okay? okay. <laughs> um, it, it, we, can, we can start by showing you what the subjunctive of the verb to be is, okay? Why don't we do that? So that's kind of fun. Um, you see what happens. The subjunctive is the endings of the subjunctive. O, with a, with a smooth breathing. Oh, yeah. Hi. O, S, with an A to an iota subscript. Uh, oh, a. Sorry. Yeah. It's very fat, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and A. Okay, and then omen, eta, circumflex, yeah, yeah, language, yeah, <laughs> omen, eta, circumflex, and osi, right? Yeah. So effectively, what you have there is the endings of a verb, but no, no root. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it, it's some languages hate things like that. The, the, my favorite example of that is in French. There's a rule about verbs that, um, that like decevoir, when you have a, a stem like E-V-O-I-R, in the last principal part, in the past, in the perfect part, so the, the form is desu, you lose the whole avoir and you get a U. Yes. So there's a verb, to, a verb to have in French is avoir, mm -hmm. so the the well, per, the perfect of it is just the letter U. Jeez. Well, so they didn't like that, so they put an E in front of it. The, 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 so the, the part you learn have to learn is U, e -U <laughs> instead of U. <laughs> but Greek doesn't abhor the vacuum, it just leaves the O. So here's another form of the verb to be. That's the subjunctive, the present subjunctive of the verb to be. There is no aorist of the verb to be. As you remember, when we were talking about gignomai, we talked about how it functions as the aorist of the verb to be, in fact. It's errors. Mm. So here's another cool one: the principal, the, the uh, present participle of the verb to be, which is own, usa, on, on uh, with a circumflex. It's a circumflex. Yeah, own, usa, oh. with a circumflex. Yeah, on, and then on toss. Okay. Again. This is just the ending of the of the of participles, uses and antos and so forth. I think the rest of them you could predict from there, right? Mm -hmm. So so again you have a form that has no no stem whatsoever, it just consists of endings, right? And you remember that, that's all right. It's because the the uh, the actual ending in the participle in New European was an S and the S just became an okay. H and disappeared. Mm -hmm. In this case. All right, so um, the there are forms, however, of the present and the imperfect, okay, and the optative and the imperative in which you have the es stem or something like it. And um, if we look at the present indicative, here are the forms. Maybe you can do a new page. Mm -hmm. uh, the forms that are attested are a me, okay, and I would put an accent on the last syllable there, but that's an enclitic form, okay. Any verb that's not accented with recessive accent, you know that something's messed up. Okay, so that's just to tell you that it's enclitic. Then the second person singular is a with a circumflex, so it is not enclitic. All right. And then the third person singular is enclitic again. It's esti. Okay. 
with a possible new movable. Um, but uh, okay, and then let's put down the plural, which is s men. As is okay. Yep, s te another enclitic, and a se also enclitic. So effectively, you only have one form, the second person singular. Um, seems to be missing. Is, is, it, is there a circumplex there? In yeah, I mean, a smooth breathing in the A. I just yeah, can't see it. Yeah, sorry. It's hard to see. This nope. thing is like... Okay, there it is. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fat, no, it and I like can't make little things. Okay, so what's going on with <laughs> S, these forms with E-I, like a me and um, a se, is that originally you have E-S-M-I. Okay, the S disappears, and you lengthen the E to an mm -hmm. E-I. Mm -hmm. And the same in S, a se, it's s n se, and the N disappears, so you get an E-I. And the other is the S stays in S men and S de and S de, right? So you can really see there's a consistency to it. In the EI, there's something else going on, but the, let's not worry about it. Mm -hmm. But I think these forms have a, a, a certain amount of consistency to them. They're athematic, as you can see. You've got a stem S and an ending me, te, and n se, okay, and te, and so forth, and de. But um, I think you need to memorize them. Okay, and let's look at the imperfect as long as we're looking at the present. These forms are very common in real Greek, so the first person singular is either an with a circumflex accent or a, right? The more oh, sorry, yeah, it's either backwards. one, not either, it's fine. <laughs> then aestha, okay, this is a totally weird active form, active second person singular ending, that's the ending. Then we have archaically in a few random words, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's weird. And then the third person singular is always ain, never a, okay? So you can confuse the first person singular and the third person singular of this imperfect. So what's happened is the, the e in has been augmented, right? And so that's why you've got a nada. At least there's that, okay? Mm -hmm. And you can see the s at least is something, something is that remains in it in aesta anyhow. All right, the plural, it's a men, like Amen. With a circle, it's and a son. And there's our son ending for athematic verbs. Okay, mm -hmm. so you know it's not altogether mysterious. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a consistency and a systematic quality to it that's better than the English ones. Okay, um, but uh, you, you you really need to learn these words and to memorize them. Um, so we'll we'll have a little quiz. Okay. okay. Um, when you come back from uh, from Thanksgiving vacation, how's that? Sometimes. Yeah, um, because there's no that you can't read Greek unless you know them, and you want to get really familiar with them and own them. So the present infinitive, and there isn't an aorist infinitive, is a nai. It's from e s n a i. So again, the 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 s is just appearing in this case, and you get the e i. Present infinitive. Um, the optative. Um, we need a new page for this. Is a a in a a a a in the singular? Now this is, we've been at this for twenty minutes. We may need to chop this up. A a a a a a a man a to a a. A a man or a man? Yeah, you can have either oh, one. Yeah. A a ta and a a san. You're right. To, you did it right. And then or put next to them a or a men with a circumflex. A ta. Yep. No way. A not just the iota. And a a n e i e n. Right. Again, the, not those forms look like uh, there's no root, but the only root that's left is the epsilon. You have the epsilon for all of these, and then an iota. Mm -hmm. uh, or an iota eta and the optative endings, right? So this isn't so bad either. So remember that, let's remember that the subjunctive, the, partic the participle, and even the optative are just basically ending. forms with an ending, and in the case of the optative, you have a root that's just an e. And the other is the ending. The, 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 what complicates them, makes them more difficult, is that the stem es survived to some extent and underwent some stem changes, mainly the s disappeared and you get an ei for it. Okay, so that's why you're going to see EI forms. All right.